So I was wandering around a museum one day, just looking at paintings, and a field of blue flowers caught my eye. It was such a pretty painting that I had to stop and stare at it for a minute. I was mesmerized. I could see that each flower was rendered with absolute precision. The painting was perfect beauty captured on a canvas. But then I noticed that lying among the flowers was an overturned pot. And I thought, why would the artist ruin the perfect beauty of his painting with a broken pot? So I looked even closer and I realized that at the edge of the painting where the flowers ended was another scene. Uh, there was a village, uh, some small houses, a man was pulling bundles of hay on a wagon. It was uh, the drudgery of a daily life. And yet this painting was beautiful. I realized then that what I was looking at was not the beauty of perfection at all, but the beauty of reality. Because where the flowers ended, that is where life began. And surprisingly, this didn't diminish the value of the painting for me at all, these imperfections. In fact, they made it even more beautiful. Because reality is beautiful. Just look around you. Look at the deeply lined palms of your grandmother. What do you see in them? Imperfection? Or do you find etched in those lines a lifetime of hard work, of tough decisions she might have had to make, of loving compromises? Is that not as beautiful as the smooth skin of a child? Why then, I began to wonder, was it so difficult to see flaws in ourselves? No matter how many beautiful flowers our lives are, are filled with, why do we insist on getting hung up on the one wilted flower that lives amongst them? And we are so hard on ourselves, getting anxious about the shapes of our noses, the spots on our cheeks, the size of our bank accounts. You know, there are so many layers to us. We are legends. We are stories. We have seen so much and done so much. We have walked on the moon and now we've made it to Mars. And yet somehow, in spite of it all, we just let ourselves lose perspective and drown in these tiny flaws. I was in a meeting with my boss one day and he said, Anissa, where's this report? Weren't you supposed to get it to me today? But I had forgotten it. I was so embarrassed. My ears were burning. I couldn't look him in the eyes. I mumbled some excuse and got out of there. But I couldn't stop thinking about it for hours afterwards. I was stubbornly wallowing in my mistake, thinking, God, how could I have been so stupid? I was so angry with myself. I don't even think my boss was that angry. But I was. And I was punishing myself with my thoughts. You know, this behavioral pattern, um, not only is it self-destructive, it's also a little arrogant, right? Why do I even think that I should be perfect all the time? No one's perfect. And yet here I am, hoping to be the exception to the rule. Often we can be our worst critics. And perhaps we should not. So here's how I want to start treating myself. You know, people say that you should do unto others what you want them to do unto you. Well, I think that we should also do unto ourselves what we would do for others. You love your child, even though he can't pronounce half the letters of the alphabet, still wets the bed, and has probably broken more precious things in your house than you care to count. You love your partner, even though he never pays the electricity bill on time, or gets angry about little things. And you love your friend, even though he's always, always late, and never picks up the check for a drink. These flaws are obvious to you, but you overlook them, you forgive them, and you love the person anyways, right? So why not love you? For the crooked tooth that makes you not want to smile as openly. For the bald spot that you keep trying to hide. For forgetting about a meeting with your boss. This is your reality. And you are who you are, not in spite of them, but because of them. So let your strengths take center stage in your life, not your weaknesses. My brother's a tennis player and he told me, he said, in tennis, um, they say you should center your game around your strength, not on hiding your weakness. If you have a strong forehand, for example, improve that, work on that and make that your main game. Don't focus on your weak backhand. Recognize your flaws, yes, accept them for what they are, but don't focus disproportionately on them. Instead, focus on the things that work for you. And then use your weaknesses as opportunities for growth. Because you're a lot of things, but not perfect. You may be smart, funny, honest, reliable, lovable, 
But you're also human. You're also clumsy and goofy, forgetful and ridiculous. So be it. Your flaws are your stories. They make you interesting. They connect you with others and they help you to grow. Understand them. Embrace them and use them to enrich your life. Your life is a canvas. You can paint on it a beautiful picture that's all perfection, no flaws, it doesn't look real. Or you can paint on it a field of wild flowers, glorious in its beauty and interesting in its reality. Perfection is overrated. I choose reality. Can you?